Hey everybody. I've been playing with a feature of Tile Diffusion and I thought I would give a quick demonstration. I'm still experimenting to try to get some good results, but let's start up a Stable Diffusion and we'll take a look at what I'm playing with and then see if, uh, if it's helpful for you to use some of this. So let's take a look at this. So I just started up Automatic 11.11 instance from scratch, and I want to take you through this from the beginning with what I'm playing with here. If you want to start working with a bigger canvas size in this, you probably can. Um, so for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to use 1024 by 768. You can always upscale later, but this will give us a little more um, kind of real estate to play with when we're doing this. Now. What I'm going to be messing around with is the regional control functionality of Tile Diffusion. That means you have to have the Tile Diffusion extension installed if you want. That's installable in the extensions here under this Multi Diffusion Upscaler for Automatic 11.11. Here's how this works. When you want to use this, the setup works something like this. We'll, we'll do some basics just to cover the functionality and then your uh, experimentation will be off to the races. So what you want here in the main prompt is only very generic terms because the positive and negative prompt here is going to flow down to all of your regions and this will make more sense when I start showing you the regions but let's just uh, let's just put this in now and we're just going to go with some of the generic terms that people commonly use like ultra high quality masterpiece um, 4k uh, photo realistic okay and then some of the you know most common terms like watermark text cartoon low quality okay now keep in mind when you're using the regional control function of tile diffusion, these will flow to all of your other prompts. What do you mean other prompts? Uh, and I'll show you. Uh, so when we come down here, we'll expand tile diffusion and we're going to expand region prompt control. Now you can start with an image here if you'd like. And this is really helpful if you have a very specific um, sort of image shape or a starting point that you want to start with. But if you want to just use a blank canvas, you can just click on create blank canvas and it will create this nice white space for you here. And that's being driven by the settings that we put up here, 1024 by 768. That's why it's this rectangle shape. Now uh, we want to enable we want to enable these settings don't do anything when you enable the region control this I'll talk about in a second uh, this checkbox here so now we have our nice blank space for controlling regions of the image and here are all the regions we can control so if you expand this let's put in our first region and you see we have this red box that showed up and this is going to be our background so we'll leave that set as background and let's put our additional prompts in here. So we want a grassy field, sunny day, vivid. Okay. Uh, what we don't want here is something dark. Fine. So we can, now you're starting to see what I was talking about. So it's going to, add or include the positive and negative prompts from above um, and combine them with this. Now, when you're talking about the background and relative to this particular draw full canvas background, you can't have any white space here. You have to, as you're adding regions, if there's a gap, unless they're all overlapping or connected, if there's any white space uh, sort of peeking through your regions, it's just going to generate noise and randomness and so you don't want that so what I would recommend is just moving this and making this the entire background so now what we told it is take this whole space use the prompts that we put 
at the very top in the prompt, and also grassy field, sunny day, vivid, and don't have it be dark. In addition to our other negative prompts. Okay, fine. This is self-explanatory. I'm belaboring the point. Now, just because we don't have a lot of screen here, let's minimize this and put region 2. And we'll enable region 2. Now, it's probably hard to see, but we do have another box here. And we want this box to be in the foreground. So that's important to change that. And we'll position this here. And we'll make it like maybe this size. Maybe a little smaller. Okay, here we go. And we want this to be a fluffy cat running in, in a grassy field. Wind blowing. Okay. Should we stop here and see what that looks like? Nah. Let's do one more while we're in here. And you'll really start understanding what we're doing. Region 3, now you can hopefully see this, that we have another box here. And I'm going to stretch this like this. And I'm going to pull that over here and have it start kind of back here a little bit and here. And I'm going to put for this prompt, tree trunk, highly detailed in a grassy field. Uh, close up. Let's do close up. You'll want to think about your images sort of individually and in total. What do I mean by that? If you just put, uh, you know, tree sitting outside, it might put a tree with sky here when it's not going to make sense if there's grass up to this height. You'll see once we render how this starts to overlay. So it's, it's going to go through and render sort of each of these images and then try to combine them together into an image that makes sense into your background. So for kicks, let's just see how this turns out. Let's give us a uh, let's give us a batch count of three just in case. Hopefully, I'm explaining this okay, and it's in such a way that you can follow along. It's it's an interesting capability. It's yet another way to have some control over your image. And here we go. We'll pick this one for example. So now we have our tree. We have our cat. He's running in the field, and the images are roughly blended together in such a way that they make sense. Let's add a fourth region, and we're going to have a cat back here, too. Let's have this little guy over here. He's going to be sitting next to his buddy here. And so this is going to be a... Fluffy cat sitting in a field, grassy field, close up. Up. Oh, well, we want that also to be in the foreground. And this feather, the weight, the recommended weight on the uh, in the uh, documentation is 0 0.2. I've had some interesting results kind of moving this around. That's really just kind of the space you want to dedicate to kind of blending the images together. So that's a that's a setting you can play with. It only goes from zero to one, uh, so you can give that a experiment with that. So now we've got all these regions that we're going to try, and let's see what we get. So you can see how it's working on some of these, how it's trying to make sense of multiple images at the same time. This one's pretty terrible, uh, but this one is a little closer. It's another way to start working on images and of course each of these can have their own seed and you can bring in for example a uh, you know a certain Laura on this one a different Laura on this one different seed here um, and you can blend and merge different things together now the more wild you go and I've tried it the less this makes sense unless your model can really understand all of what you're trying to do um, I'm only using the 1.5 uh, sort of generic model, so it has a pretty limited understanding of doing anything too strange all at once. Uh, it can't really uh, make sense of that too well. But 
it's interesting to be able to control this. And then if you just want to move your cat over here, move this cat over here, uh, move your tree on this side, move this guy, move maybe move him up into the back, move this other one over here. You can sort of move these things around. And we'll put the tree here, we'll make it even larger. And this cat's going to be sitting and up close. And this cat will be maybe in the distance running. And you've, it's also going to have to make sense, kind of what I'm talking about, right? Where you're positioning these things are going to have to make sense based on where your background image is. That's why it sometimes helps to start with an image and stay uh, consistent with an image instead of regenerating the background every time. That will also help you kind of get a little more organized in your results. But let's just see what happens now that we move some things around. All of our uh, trees and cats and things should move. Um, but the elements will be roughly the same here. I think this will be a, a good uh, opportunity for me to explain what I was trying to get to before, which is it's going to try to make sense of all of what you're telling it and then synthesize it together. But here's one. If it's going to try to put some water or some sky or something in a spot that doesn't make sense, you're going to get an image like this. So you'll have to be careful with your prompt creation. Um, you'll have to spend some, some time thinking about all of these. And our tree is really... Tree is really not making it uh, to the forefront anywhere, but that's because our tree somehow went, was in the background. There we are. So that's why. You want to be careful about what's in the foreground and what's in the background uh, because you'll start to lose some of your elements here. And it might be helpful to crank this up a little bit to maybe 10 and see. Sometimes you get a better blend between the images than others. And that's when you can experiment with, I mean, that one's just awful. But uh, sometimes you can experiment with, obviously, your prompt, like you normally would, and this feather setting. I'm going to try to reuse that. And can we reuse it? I might, um, I might check for updates and see if that's been resolved, because the, the seeds for each of these is here. So if you really want to grab the seed for region 1, you can grab the seed right from here. And then you'll see the seed for region 2, the seed for region 3. So if you want to try to recreate this image exactly, you can go through and, and grab each of these. And then the seed for region 4 is right here. Now, sorry if I'm scrolling fast and making you dizzy. Okay. And now we can try to generate off off of all of those seeds and we can kind of iterate off of this a little bit and see if we get anything. Let's try feathering it like a point 0.4. Let's see if that gives us a bit of a smoother blend here. So you get the picture. You can control some of these elements and then move them around. And of course, all the usual stable diffusion experimentation to try to get the image that you want is exaggerated by the fact that you're sort of dealing with four different images at the same time in this case, right? I have sort of this image of the cat that I'm trying to work on, this image of this cat that I'm trying to work on, the tree image and the background image, and I'm trying to synthesize all of that into something that makes sense. But it is a very interesting way to be able to control your image. Now you can do some of these things with control nets, you can do some of these things with um, you know in painting and image to image and uh, lots of uh, there's lots of other ways to influence the image in these ways but I just thought this was a this is an interesting component of the tiled diffusion regional control where you can do you can do some pretty interesting things so I'm gonna keep experimenting with this I, as I was reading through some of the documentation I thought this was pretty interesting and I thought worth making a video about it I hope this inspires some thought, gets you doing some creating and seeing seeing uh, what kinds of things you can do with this and all the other great features of Stable Diffusion. Thanks for watching.